We've been to some some amazing places in Europe, and uh, also. But I I just think I mean just from seeing three nights here, there's just there's something when um, many thousands of like Christian people coming together and lifting lifting up Jesus together. That's just beautiful. Between the Grooves is hosted by James Curtis, music director and morning man in the greater Toronto area on Joy Radio. And Aisha Woods, Grammy-nominated singer, songwriter, and musician. Together, they talk with artists and industry insiders to discover our connection between music and faith. You can connect with us on Facebook or X at Between Grooves and on Instagram at Between Grooves Pod. Now, here's James and Aisha. Episode 292. Welcome back. Yeah, episode 292 okay. Between the Grooves with James Curtis and Aisha Woods. And uh, yes, we've got sir. a great uh, bunch of people we're going to be chatting with on this episode. But before we do, mm-hmm. Aisha, uh, let's talk touring. Let's talk, um, you know, going on the road, doing doing the concerts from city to city. Yes. Do you have any favorites? I mean, you've probably been all over the place. Any favorite cities that you've been to? Absolutely. Um over in Europe, the Schengen region was uh, probably one of mm, my favorite spots, uh, particularly... Pa- pa- favorite spot to perform or favorite spot for the scenery and, and the people? Because there's obviously the, obviously different elements to all that, right? For sure. Um, there were some really beautiful places uh, in Germany that I visited but of all of the places that I've visited, I think Norway was the most beautiful. And Switzerland. Oh, I would love Golly, to visit I, Switzerland. I felt like I was in the sound of music. Yeah. Like just flying into there. Oh, gosh. I'd love to just go back just to see what I didn't get a chance to see right. um, while touring, you sure. know. Yeah, because you're yeah. you've got limited time when you're actually touring right. to to do sightseeing and whatnot. Like you might only have a few hours. Um, mm-hmm. From mm-hmm. all the gigs that you've done, is there one that stands out as far as the best uh, stage setup? Not necessarily the setup, like from a visual standpoint, but from the technical standpoint, everything you know was flawless. Uh, sound check mm-hmm. went great. Uh, the actual performance went better than expected. <laughs> that sort of thing. Oh uh, no. Nope. Nope. Okay. Okay. Well, that wraps up today's edition of Between the Grooves. No. That's hilarious. Well, this week, a uh, conversation with a Swedish sibling trio. It's a family band or family group, um, more on the pop side of things in the Christian world. It's Dennis, Emmy, and Ella forming yes. the group Lynn D. Looking forward to this. So you guys have uh, just started the Winter Jam tour. Um, This is this is a big deal for you guys, I guess. I mean, this you're getting crowds every night. Um, You're touring with people like Crowder, Lecrae, Kane, wonderful, Mm -hmm. Katie, Nicole. Um, Who's your favorite out of everyone so far? Oh, Don't get in trouble it's so with hard to answer. pick from so many great artists. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, all, all of them are extremely good, extremely professional. We all look up to them. They're great. Um, I've, for a long time, and Dennis, too, we've listened to Lecrae a lot at home. So uh, it's really, really cool to be touring together with him. Yeah, and I mean, it's so cool that we're just uh, one weekend in on the tour, but it already feels like a little family going around um, to each city. So, I mean, it's going to be a great two and a half months that's coming. Are you touring with the group or are you traveling on your own? Uh, we're we're in our own bus, but I mean, at the arenas and stuff, we're, everybody's there. So we're right. we're together. So you guys are, mm. you guys are siblings. Um, can you guys or have you guys yep. related a lot with Kane? Because that's the same sort of deal. They're obviously a little older, but. Yeah, yeah. Well, we we have connected on that for sure. Because uh, they're also two sisters and one brother. Um, so, okay. yeah, we uh, we started talking to them and we're like, oh, we have to like make something out of this. So, um, yeah, we'll see what De- happens. But, yeah, it's, it's so uh, amazing for sure to to be able to connect on that level because it's 
special, you know, when you're when you're siblings. It's yeah, it's a different kind of dynamic. So they really are. Oh sure, that. Dennis, does that put a little pressure on you to to do one of those backflips? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I um, I had no idea he could do that. And then the, on the first night when he he pulled pulled out the backflip, and we were all of us were in shock. <laughs> yeah. 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 And he was like, "Yeah, I I used to share uh, back in high school." Like, oh, okay. That explains that it. Explains it. <laughs> uh, but um, I don't think you'll see a backflip from me on stage ever. Okay. Well, <laughs> just at the end of the tour, we figured the pressure was <laughs> yeah, on. You know. Really- uh, yeah, we don't really hear in Sweden like that. So, <laughs> oh my gosh, how different is this tour that you're on right now? Different from some of the venues that you've done in in other countries. I mean, you've you're from Sweden, but you've done stuff in Norway, Finland, Holland, England, Poland, Ukraine, Brazil, Kenya, Finland. Mm-hmm. Did I say that already? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Um, like you, you've been all over the place. You've been all over the place in Europe. Uh, but now you're in North America. Um, is it? Is there a difference? Mm-hmm. I think it is. I mean, the of course over here um, there's a bigger Christian population. Uh, so I mean, mm. uh, getting to do like arena shows with like Christian music that's pretty much unheard of uh, in Europe. Uh, and also the response from the crowd here every night has been just amazing. Mm. Uh, as soon as someone is preaching a word or um, uh, asking everyone to lift their hands. Everyone is just on it from second one. Uh, so that's been just amazing. Uh, not awesome. not to say that, uh, I mean, a- everything is bad back in Europe. Uh, we, we've been to some, some amazing places in Europe uh, also. But I, I just think, I mean, just from seeing three nights here, there's just... There's something when um, many thousands of like Christian people coming together and lifting lifting up Jesus together. That's just beautiful. Yeah. Sure, sure. Now I've got a question. Where where are you, Dennis, in the bunch? Um, are you older brother? Are you middle child? Uh, are you baby? Yeah. What? I. I'm number one. I'm the oldest. <laughs> I'm number one. <laughs> he's jumping on that real quick. Well, he's really humble as well. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. <laughs> so, well, De- Dennis, if you're the oldest, who's who sings lead then, or do you all take turns? Uh, we we take turns. We all take turns. Yeah, but I would say it's nice. more. It's more, more and more the girls. Uh, for some years ago, it was more me, but now we have okay. uh, switched over more. So uh, the girls are taking more of the lead. You know, wh- when you have one um, one male voice and two female voices, you need to find a key that suits uh, all three of us. And uh, oh, sure. uh, I mean, I, the girls uh, outnumber me, so. <laughs> Well, yeah. but we all we all have different roles, and and Dennis he he's a great producer, and he's been just uh, he's just been better and better the last years, and and we all write our music together, so that's so, nice. Uh, we it's really everyone is working just as hard. There's something special about the sibling blend, like. When I was on the road and touring, my brother was right there with me. And there were times when he was not able to be there. And I just felt so like, I felt so alone. Um, And he was, he was my MD. So he would keep the band together and, um, and I don't think there's anyone on this planet that can make me laugh as hard as my siblings. Um, hmm. Is is it ever a comedy show between you guys while you're out on the road? Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> we have so many inside jokes, of course. And sure, we just sure. we can give each other just one look and we know exactly what we're <laughs> thinking yeah. <laughs> about. references and like TikToks that we've seen and like places we've been and we're like yeah just burst into laughing so 
yeah, we definitely mm-hmm. know what you mean by that. Do you yeah, also have that with your special. with your singing? Like, I would assume that your songs, you sing it a certain way anyways, but is it to the point where, especially if it's a new song, you kind of know exactly where each of you is going as far as harmony? Because there's nothing like sibling harmony. Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, pretty much. We're, we're trying to incorporate harmonies uh, as much as we can. And um, especially m and has a great ear for harmony. So it's it's um, uh, pretty much easy for us to find what, what we're trying to do. It's uh, Our challenge is uh, mostly that we need to take away stuff. <laughs> yeah, we oh. did too much. <laughs> we add, we add, them, <laughs> add them on each other. <laughs> And but I think we we know our like uh, each other's voices so well sure, that we can kind sure. of tell like oh this uh, this key is good for you or this uh, note is not how you're uh, you can do better on this one or so we and we really know it ourselves as well if if someone of uh, the other guys tells me like oh you can do better on this one I know that's like yeah. I can because we know each other's voices so well. Right. And how how involved is your manager in all of this? Your manager, of course, being your dad. Yeah. I mean, uh, the whole family is involved in everything we do. Um, I mean, as far as um, the music, we we pretty much write and produce like us three. Uh, and of course, they can have opinions on stuff. But um, as far as everything we do together, like we're everyone is involved, both mom and dad. And we we've been doing this for so many years together, everyone. So uh, we take uh, all decisions together. We uh, we pray about everything together. Like we're we're all in this together. Dennis, mm-hmm. uh, your sisters have said that you're more the producer type. So what does everybody else do? Like your dad kind of manages um, the group, I suppose. Um, he's the guy I contacted mm-hmm. to get you guys on the show. Uh, what does your mom do? Yeah. And what does Emmy and Ella do? Uh, so our mom, actually, um, she's been touring for um, her uh, life um, around the world. Oh, wow. uh, so she she's grown up doing uh, basically what we're what we're doing now uh, with her two brothers. So we, we have that legacy from her. Um, and nice. we, we started with doing uh, Christian kids music. We, we did like six albums uh, before we were like 15 years old. Uh, and she, she My wrote goodness. all that music. Yeah. Uh, she wrote all, all that music. So we, we, we started with, with our mom and dad also on stage and touring for, yeah, 15 years, basically. Uh, so they've been it from, they've been in it from, from the start. And yeah, that was all before we started like this, this Lindy uh, group. Yeah. So oh, uh, both of them are involved in, in everything and helping out as much as they can, both on the road and back home. So, uh, mm-hmm. We're mm-hmm. super grateful for both mom and dad to to be so involved and um, supporting. supporting, spending so much time to for us to to get to to do this. So we we could never do this without them. Uh, and then right. Emmy and Ella, uh, same thing. I mean, they're uh, involved in in the writing process. I'm of course I'm I'm sitting behind the computer and producing, but we're writing everything together. They're recording vocals. They're doing social media stuff. Um, yeah, we're we're uh, we we try to not like think that someone is doing more than the other. We we try to balance everything out. Sure, sure. That's good. That's a healthy balance. I have two questions. The first one was uh, with your mom being familiar with touring what kind of music did she do when she was out on the road touring yeah so that was also um or not also but they did uh, like gospel music okay but Ooh. christian christian gospel music uh but norwegian style yeah kind of because she's from norway not yeah. sweden yeah. <laughs> wow. I'll tell you what, uh, Norway is one of the most beautiful places that I've ever visited in my life. And um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, quick, quick uh, story. So we were touring in Europe one year and 
we were in Sweden, Norway, and Germany. And Mm -hmm. while we were in Norway, um, we had a few pieces of laundry. And our host, uh, they told us to just give it to um, someone at the at the front desk. And again, it was just a few pieces of laundry. So we gave the few items to this person. And when we got ready to check out and head to the next um, country, they slapped us with a $764 no. Laundry bill. Oh no! <laughs> yeah. Okay. Whoa. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. And my parents were uh, with us at the time, um, and my band, and um, and I was just like, okay, we gotta look on the bright side. We've never been to Sweden before. We've never been to Norway right. before. It's okay. Yeah. Like, we'll just, you know. Just bite the bullet. I mean, Norway. Pay the seven. <laughs> no, you yeah. were saying. Norway is is very expensive. It's expensive right. compared to all the other Scandinavian countries, too. Right, right. Well, yeah. I'll tell you what. We learned that lesson. Um, I'd love yeah. to go back. Yeah. Okay. Ever do laundry but, in Norway? Um, <laughs> yeah, don't do laundry in Norway. There you go. Lesson learned. <laughs> we would just... We just come home with a bunch of dirty clothes. It's fine. We'll be okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Aisha, did you have that? Did you have a second question, or is that is that what it was? You're, My second question, I forgot. Yeah. I forgot oh, you forgot the was. question? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I have to say, you guys speak English very well. Um, does that uh, cause the the language issue? Does that cause issues when you're writing music? Like, are you writing it in English, or are you writing it? Uh, in other languages. Well, first of all, thank you. Yeah, uh, we uh, we don't speak mm-hmm. English that much since we uh, we're still like based in Sweden, so we only ever use okay. it when we speak English to someone who is um, from a country who speaks English. Um, so, but we we write all our music in English, and that's been kind of the area where we feel like sometimes we need uh, to bring in a co-write to just get mm. the like um, synonyms and like words that we don't have in our vocabulary that is like um, more uh, lyrics and language that just paints a picture or um, it's more like a yeah more of painting and a, just a more how you would say it in English actually um, so mm-hmm. sometimes we bring in co-writes for just someone English speaking who can be like oh but this is actually a better way to uh, say that or I I guess what you mean but this is uh, yeah another way that you can say it that actually fits better with what you're trying to say so and sometimes we we wrote like the whole um, the whole song with with the lyrics and stuff and then we just um, sometimes we we like what, what we have wrote and just go to someone English speaking back home in Sweden that we, we know um, uh, like our, uh, like English is their first language and they just check yes. the lyrics to see like the grammar and everything. So everything's fine. That's nice. It's nice. You have that system in place for that. Yeah, that's for yeah. sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How did you guys uh, team up with dream records? Um, we, uh, as we said, we went to Nashville a couple of times in 2022 um, and have had a, a meetings with different labels and stuff. And then uh, we didn't actually have a meeting with Dream. Um, so Well, they're, uh, we, they're based I, out of California, I, aren't they? I, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I had knew about them uh, from some friends that, that were also signed with them um, for, for some years ago. Um, but then we, we got home to Sweden then just a couple months later, we we got in contact, and um, uh, the the owner of the company had had just known about us, um, and and we we started talking. And our friend, um, our Swedish friend Tommy Iceland, that's from 
he's from Sweden, but he lives in Nashville, and he, he's the one that mm. brought us over the first the first time we got there. Uh, he's a great writer, and yeah, we've been writing um, some stuff together. Uh, and I think he was the one that, like, uh, yeah, uh, got our name to uh, to Dream and connected us. And then we we talked for uh, for a bit uh, back and forth, and yeah, we we signed a deal. You know what? Speaking of names, it it reminded me of what my second question was. How did you come up? <laughs> How did you come uh, up with yeah, yeah, Lynn D? <laughs> yeah. Actually, our last name in Swedish is Lindia. So uh, oh. it's not spelled exactly like the band name, but it's a playoff from from that. So. Gotcha. Lindy is how an American would pronounce our name. Yeah, yeah. so like, like Kane and, and their last name, I mean, for, for us to say in America, yeah, Lindia, that wouldn't actually work pretty well. <laughs> so we, we just made it more uh, American. More, more international. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll mm. jack yeah. up a name in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> we will. Yeah. And, and then it'll stick. Right. Yeah. So, oh, so gosh. yeah, that's great. So you guys are doing this massive winter jam thing. Can you tell us how that material materialized? Like, was that through the label or was that, you know, your dad just uh, poking into where he needed to poke in as far as a manager's concerned and try and get mm-hmm. onto the roster? Yeah, well, our dad is also um, in Sweden and Scandinavia. He is a, a concert promoter. So he's brought like big Christian artists from the States and uh, the UK um, to Sweden nice. and to Norway. Um, so he's been like in the, in that business for a long time. Um, so he has a lot of great like connections and contacts in that like um, booker um, yes. business, booking business. And so he had been in contact with uh, the people that do winter jam for, for a while. And then, um, we, uh, yeah, the, it was just a great sit this year. So, so they uh, mm-hmm. actually reached out to us, and uh, we, uh, yeah, that's how it came to. Is so there is there an audition <laughs> process for that, or they already know your music, and so you're just you know added? Uh, I think uh, no, no, no audition. Just uh, more, more towards the the other thing. But I mean, there there's more to the story because. Um, like um, going into this year, uh, this was the first time that none of us uh, had anything else that we had to do in life, like school or mm. work or something. It's just, <laughs> we have uh, it's like, yeah, we didn't have anything else going on, so we figured, hey, why not? Let's do Winter Jam, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but um, Ella was um, uh, graduating from like Swedish high school. Yeah, so, yeah, then jump okay. homeschooling. Yeah. yeah. So we we've been nice. tied to um, to school and stuff like uh, uh, at the same time as touring for 15 years, trying to balance um, everything together. So this was the first time yes. that we uh, could all all three of us uh, really go all in on the music. And we we sat down this summer and decided that uh, we're, we're going to give this one year where uh, all uh-huh. of our attention is on on the music and on the band and and see see what happens and uh, like jesus we we really want to give this one year of our time and make the most out of it and, and we didn't know about winter jam uh, at that time and then we we started uh, like in the beginning of september we we went away for three days all of us um like in the woods in sweden just in to little cabin. in mm. a little cabin just to pray together uh fast Good. and Write down yeah. and dreams and visions and everything. And um, I mean, Winter Jam wasn't really like um, super specifically what we wanted to do. We, we had a lot of big dreams, but of course, Winter Jam has always been in the back of our minds, knowing about it for many years. Uh, and mm-hmm. then going home from from that trip and just like two, three weeks later, we got the email from Winter Jam. So, I mean, God is just so so good with his timing and everything and it's i mean mm-hmm. it, if it was any year that we were supposed to be on it this was the perfect uh, perfect time so so if you're gauging awesome. if you're gauging your future on this one year period 
Um, how is your music doing in North America on radio and in streaming and whatnot? Uh, I mean, it, uh, I, I think it's doing okay. Yeah, it's getting out there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm uh, we, playing it. As soon as you guys, as soon as you guys signed to Dream Records, and your first—I can't remember the name of the single—but the first single came out. It's like, wow, this is great. Why aren't more people playing this? Right, right. Mm, thank you, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's just what we're working on—just trying to get it out there because that—that's been our our biggest problem, being like in a small town in Sweden, just trying to get everything out there and get the the muscles that we need to get everything out. Yeah. Yeah. And but sure. uh, as you said, the first single, um, anything, I think that went to like number one on the rhythmic chart or something. Nice. Nice. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh, getting more and more out there. And of course, coming from Sweden, we, we, we have never like really thought about radio or in the, in the U S or stuff like that. And then when we first came here, we, uh, I mean, uh, we opened our eyes to the whole Christian world, the market over here, and it's just so different mm. from back home. So uh, we, we've just been <laughs> grinding back home, trying to, yeah, just trying to do our thing, uh, get the music out there. And but uh, it, it will be awesome to to keep keep spreading the music over here for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It certainly is a business, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. In in the uh, in both uh, positive and negative yeah, ways. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Like, <laughs> if you don't do the business side, then you can't be successful in getting the music out there. And and exactly. that's not yeah. to sound unspiritual or anything like that, but that's the, just the reality in any profession. You've got the yeah. business side. Absolutely. You, you got to dot the I's and cross the T's, and you got to work sure the music enough. and work to get it to radio, work to get it to streaming, uh, get the exposure. I, I mean, the, the fact that you're on this massive you know, tour group um, throughout the U.S. is going to be getting you guys some great exposure anyways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. It is. We, we've gotten a lot of positive feedback from just this weekend. So we're so, so excited to just be, we have like 10 weekends left. So yeah. uh, we're just so wow. excited to meet more people and see more of, more of America and see more of, well, yeah, just meet new people, and it's so interesting to see how people react to our music. And so far, <laughs> it's been really great. So <laughs> There are quite a few artists in the lineup. Um, how do you guys fit into that? Obviously, I guess you guys are more of an opener, but how, many, how much time do you get? How many songs do you get to do? So there's three openers uh, on the tour, and each one gets 10 minutes. So we we've um, we've done a set for ten minutes, trying to showcase as much as we can uh, about sure. um, uh, who we are and and our music, and try to co incorporate um, some dance choreography and just yeah, we we've been trying our best back home to bring the best ten minutes we can, uh, both go. in uh, like the musical arrangement and. And as far as uh, the dynamic between uh, more up tempo songs, slower songs, and and just been working to to also, of course, the most important thing: get the message uh, very clear and um, and uh, straight away uh, from the top mm -hmm. to to the last second. Yeah, and I also think that since there are a lot of like different artists in the, in the group, there's a great mix of genres and. Um, yes. But I, we are the only like straight up pop um, act, so so that's interesting. Oh, really? how people also like, oh wow, I really like that you bring Christian pop music um, mm -hmm. to this tour. So so yeah, I feel like we really have a, a had a place to to fill there, and it's yeah, it's a great great mix between genres. What is it like logistically on stage if there's three openers and obviously the main acts as well? Um, is your sound check like, you know, if half an hour before you go on? Normally they would start with the big acts doing all of their sound checks first and then the openers would be last. And then and then once you're on stage, what is it like, you know, the transition between the three openers? And so actually for this tour, we had like um, two days before we started where every everyone got to do their sound check like for for the whole tour so so 
we we had some time to get everything dialed in and then we just save it mm-hmm. and we pull it up every night so so that's very convenient to to not have to do sound check with all artists every everywhere we go uh, and then um, as far as the changeover goes they're very they're hardworking people. I mean, the the stage people and everyone in the production. They're working so hard to get everything uh, up and running every night, and they're they they're making sure that uh, all changeovers are fast and uh, and that everything is plugged in and ready to go. So, uh, I mean, we we uh, we can really trust them to to um, to make sure that everything is working every night. And what are you doing in your downtime? Because obviously, once you arrive at a venue, there's probably a lot of standing around waiting. If you've only got 10 minutes on stage, what are you doing the rest of the time other than watching everybody else? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we, uh, yeah, we, of course, have watched the other um, artists a few nights. And, uh, but we also do um, uh, go up to our merch, merch booth and uh, yes. talk to people, meet new people. Yeah. Um, so and also, also during the night and during the day, it's there's an, an amazing crew. The whole Winter Jam crew is like a big family. So we have a lot of time to just hang out and meet new people. We've had we've already this weekend had so many interesting and very uh, giving uh, conversations. So it's been awesome. really really great to connect with all the people on the tour. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And but again, also, times, like, guys. we love, um, we love meeting new people and the people who actually mm-hmm. listen to our music and seeing their faces and getting to talk to them, because um, we wouldn't be able to, of course, um, not without God, but also without people listening, we wouldn't be able to right. uh, make our music. So we uh, we just want to meet people, and that's the like best part of being. Um, touring and seeing new places that we get to meet so many great people and the people who actually listen to our music. So that's very important for us to, to connect and to be out there and see people. So yeah, we love that part. Are you actually living in Nashville for the next few months? You're not going back and forth between North America and Sweden, are you? No, no, no. no. We, okay, we are, cool. we're, we are on a bus uh, and that's, the, so we, that's we that's home. For, that's <laughs> home for you right now. Yeah, exactly. So it, it depends a bit. Right now, uh, we're snowed in <laughs> south of Nashville. <laughs> so, but, but we're trying to. Uh, we're based in Nashville, so we'll we'll go back to Nashville whenever we have some off days. Okay. Okay. And and gotcha. are you living in the bus when you're in Nashville, or do you got a place to stay there? Yeah, in the bus. In the bus, wow! Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know in if I could. Life. I don't know if I could be living in a bus with my family for an extended period of time. <laughs> but that's just me. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we have we have a pretty big RV, and uh, we're used to living together. We're family, so yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're good. <laughs> there you go. Now, apart from the the music, somebody is responsible for working out these dance moves because y'all got them oh well, yeah you can move <laughs> actually yeah both emmy and i have been dancing for a long time um okay growing up uh, and uh, it's actually i i dance hip-hop uh, now also so okay. it's actually my hip-hop dance teacher who has uh, choreographed uh, what we're doing so nice so you you were formally trained yeah, kind of. <laughs> okay. But, but mm-hmm. I wasn't. <laughs> yeah, so we're... So we're you're teaching Dennis. Hats off right. to Dennis for, for doing that. Yeah, so I, I, I've been sweating before this tour trying to get all moves together, but yeah. I'll tell you what, I think it's great what you guys are doing, and you guys are... You've, you've just scratched the surface. God's got some really, really big things for you, and I'm excited to be privy to it. I'm looking forward to wow, seeing so what all God is going to do with you. I think big yeah. things in North America. I, I honestly uh-huh. think it's like I, I, this. This will this will this will be big, um, especially yep. with the Winter Jam stuff and growing up from there. I think you guys aren't going to be spending as much time in Sweden as you have in the past. 
<laughs> yeah, but thank you guys. Yeah. Well, we really are very open to what God wants to do, and yeah. uh, it feels uh, obvious to us that in this time He wants us over here. But if He says something else, then we will do that. So we yeah. we will follow whatever God. Is, is pointing us to. So, okay. uh, Dennis, Emmy, Ella, thank you so much for uh, hanging with Aisha yes. and I. Um, really we appreciate, appreciate your you time. Guys. And really loving your music. Honestly, I, I like it's, it's, um, it's refreshing. It is refreshing and, and it's <laughs> a great beat, great message. And, uh, and, and great song length too. Like, like you've got it down as far as what, from a radio perspective, what radio looks for in a song. Um, like you guys are going to take off. I know you will over the next 12 months or so. I think this, this, uh, winter jam that you're on is going to obviously, you know, catapult you guys further than you've ever seen. But beyond that, uh, people will know who you are and, uh, and listen to your stuff, even if they're streaming or whatever else. Yeah. Thank you so much guys yes, for all the you. kind words. Yeah. We, we really, really appreciate that. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see where God wants to take this. So mm-hmm. we're excited. And I thought you said Dennis was humble. <laughs> well. awesome thank you so much guys appreciate it god bless you guys y'all stay safe and stay warm Bye-bye. lynn d you gotta check out their music i love it mm-hmm. so right here we're gonna check out some artist advice from our guy terrence white i think uh the one advice i would give is to be true to who you are um, in a world that we live in that uh, it's very comparison driven. It's one of which that we look at trends and to a degree uh, trends are, you know, there's a popular aspect, if, you know, to doing music, you know, the difference between popular and novelty, uh, which is a balance in between the two. So uh, I'm saying being a student of what's out there, you know, and understand the elements of what it takes to do it, but ultimately find your sweet spot. Be true to who you are and in your prayer walk or your acknowledgement, you know, and be self-aware and find what it is that you're designed to do and be comfortable with that, whether whether that really is popular or not, uh, because mm-hmm. comparison can really damage you because if you're looking for that level of affirmation, as quick as it comes, it can go. So that's the one thing that I would share with anybody. I love it. I love it. And it's it's so true, um, and more so now than ever before. There's the the temptation to compare yourself to the next person. Um, embrace your individuality, and I love when he said, "Be comfortable with it." You know. Um, so many times artists, they get lost because there's the pressure to um, that may come from maybe a label or uh, or booking agent or, you know, whomever. There's the pressure to uh, meet numbers, you know, and it's like, oh, you have to conform to this or that. But the reminder is there just be who God put in you to be and, and be okay with it. If it's not popular. I gotta be honest, Aisha, I found it uh, hard to concentrate on what he was saying because I just love his voice that, that baritone and, (laughs) and he's so easygoing. (laughs) (laughs) Seriously. But yeah, I mean, I like the point where he made about being a student you know, always, uh-huh. always learning and, and always. you're never there. You know what I mean? You're, you're always mm-hmm. learning, uh, but also finding that sweet spot, finding that place where you're yeah. meant to be. Um, mm-hmm. It's, it's, uh, it's very deep and profound, but very true as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Comes back to purpose. Yep. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, that wraps up today's edition of Between the Grooves. Many thanks for uh, Terrence for his uh, words of wisdom and also yeah. to Lynn D for hanging with us today. See you next week. Thanks.
Thanks for listening to Faith Strong Today's Between the Grooves podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, would you consider sharing it with your friends, rating our podcast, or giving us some love on your socials to your amazing friends and followers will only help us reach more people. We'd also love to hear from you and share your feedback in an upcoming episode. Send your video or written message to Aisha and James on Facebook or X at Between Grooves and on Instagram at Between Grooves Pod. Or email us anytime. Hello at faithstrongtoday.com.